you got some dudes that can run, they better be ready. Uh, that's for sure, because that, that ball is going to be in the air. So we're going to find out Saturday. You mentioned all the new guys from Louisiana Tech. Is there a point in the season where you say, OK, they've played enough games, we're comfortable with who they are? Is two games enough to say, no. OK, we got a comfort level here? No. I mean, again, the, 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 you, we learn, you learn a lot from that Missouri tape. Uh, you know, the Stephen F. Austin kind of got away, you know, pretty quick. Um, and I thought they, you know, continue to do what they do, but they, you know, probably they got they got a lot we haven't seen. Uh, but yeah, it's, that's as you get going in the season, you have much better comfort zone of okay, here's this is who they are. You, you have more feel for their personnel the more you see them play other people, and uh, uh, so yeah, I'm glad we got two games. Uh, that's for sure. You know, again, you got a, a lot of new people all over the place. Uh, it definitely helps when you when you can study, you know, new coaches, and now they've had a couple time, a couple games to call the game, et cetera. Uh, you get a feel for just their base stuff. Have you ever not done players of the game? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We've had we've had times, but it's not often. Uh, it's not often, but there wasn't no player of the game Saturday. That's for sure. Not defensively. Uh, DJ and Shipley were our players of the game offensively. Did a great job and. Um, we had a uh, special team, and we, you know, I think they put all that stuff out. I don't know, but we didn't have anybody on defense. Obviously, you've um, seen Wes work behind the scenes for years. Um, having a down defensive performance, what have you seen through the years that gives you confidence that he'll be able to adjust now? Wes is like this, man. He, he's, he's, he don't get too high, he don't get too low. You know, go pitch a shutout, have five sacks and three picks. He'll be the exact same on, on Monday. Uh, that's one of the things I love about Wes. You have a bad night like we had. You know, and I say bad night, we gave up 12 points. Created, we've created four turnovers in two games. That's the other thing. Um, and really should have at least six. We dropped a pick six. We missed time to jump on a tip ball at Georgia Tech that we Trotter probably could have had. Uh, and then we had two balls on the ground. One was a strip. Uh, sack that we didn't come up with. So, I mean, we've done a good job in, in, in that area, but uh, he's, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a savvy guy and a veteran guy. He's seen it all. Uh, he's been in about every situation you can be in. Uh, I ain't worried about Wes. Any other questions from the room? Thank you. Thank you. guys who are here because they're good people as much as athletes. I mean, how much does Jordan's recruitment fit into that uh, string of, of different athletes in terms of him as a person? Was it eventually what convinced you guys to, to take it? Well, I mean, it's really that way with everybody. I mean, I think we really try to recruit people first. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a, a, a very talented player at Norman. Uh, we liked him. Uh, just needed to really kind of see him. He was he was developing. Uh, he was a little bit like Brandon Thomas in that regard, kind of a developing guy. And, and uh, man, what a what a player! I mean, great player. Going to be joining. We got we got what four or five offensive linemen in the NFL right now, and he'll be there soon. Uh, he's he's on his way. He's a really smart kid and and super super high character. You know, great mom and uh, just about all the right things. But he's a student of the game. He really understands the game. I think, I think you know, and he's, he snaps on the side. He does some of that. I think he'll be a guy that can play all five positions at the next level. Uh, he's long enough to play tackle, and, and he's just super strong. And, and again, just really smart player, uh, physical. And got a bright, bright future in, ahead of him. He'll play for a while. Um, but who he is as a person uh, just accentuates the talent that he has. It, it really does because uh, his work ethic, his character, as I said earlier, it's not, you, got, you can't just have talent. I mean, it's commitment. It's, it's discipline. It's, it's, it is doing what's right when nobody's watching. It's, it's your training habits. It's your commitment to your nutrition. It's all those things. And, uh, you know, your football aptitude, uh, your love of preparation, and he, he exemplifies all those things. What's it 
say to you, <clears throat> excuse me, in the in this transfer era, that I think Sergio's the only guy who left uh, since the end of last year. Yeah, yeah. We had 109 guys go through spring. They all stayed, and you know, it's just kind of it's just kind of where we are in college football. You know, um, especially you know they put the four game rule in to be a a positive, you know, to be able to play kids and. And then it's kind of turned around into, you know, I mean, you'll see other guys leave uh, either here or elsewhere between now and these first four games. That's just kind of the nature of college football these days. So. Okay, Coach, I just wanted to ask, you know, when we spoke to Coach Goodwin after the game, he said that those guys, when they look at the film, they'll know what they've done wrong. Like, they already know kind of what they need to adjust. I guess how with so many young guys on the team, like you were talking about, how do they kind of take that criticism and feedback? Oh, good. You know, yesterday's Mental Monday. Get your mind right. Uh, so, you know, we celebrate the win. We enjoy the win. It's hard to win. Uh, it's always better to correct when you're coming off a win, that's for sure. But Mondays are middle Monday. It's it's that's that's we gotta get better, you know? And so here's how we gotta do it and everybody take ownership of that and and uh keep going. So we've got we've got a lot of experience on the defensive side, you know, especially up front. Now we played a bunch of people too. I mean we played a man, we just we we played a lot of people on defense. Uh, Saturday and, and purposely, you know, we got guys in there early and, you know, just trying to, again, just grow our team, learn about our team, develop our team, be able to have some stuff where we could challenge. Um, and uh, so they, 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 they responded well. They know. I mean, you know, Miles Murphy knows when he's loafing. And if he don't, he finds out when he comes to the meeting on Monday. Uh, and then you either respond or you don't. If you got any any freaking pride to you, uh, you'll respond. If you don't, you'll end up on the sideline. Don't matter who you are, just the way it is. That's just we ain't gonna change the standard. Uh, and and that's it's not just Miles. I mean, it's the whole group. So yeah, they they respond. You and Sonny, as long as you're honest and transparent, you don't have any problems. You and Coach Cumbie know each other from the past at all? Is there any crossover or anything? Or? No, I, I know of him and have, have certainly followed him over the years. He's he's been a great coordinator, a lot of different places, and he was a good player. And, and uh, you know, he's he's in that whole air raid uh, world. Uh, he's been very successful, and um, so never really, uh, I don't think, cross paths with him. But uh, he's he's. Uh, uh, he's where he is because of his career path and the success that he's had, for sure, you know, offensively. I told DJ yesterday that I listened to some of his post-game interviews, man, he's breaking down defense is what he's seen, and he seems to have great recall. Yeah, he does. From great, do you think that that is a part of his game that maybe nobody knows about, just maybe what a student of the game he is? And he was like, I can remember plays all the way back to Pop Warner. Like, yep. Breaking down defenses. No, DJ's been that way since he's a great preparer. He loves it. I, I I tell the story of his freshman year, you know, when Danny Poole called me to tell me Trevor's got COVID at like eleven in the morning. And I'm going, you know, it was the BC game on uh what day was it? Uh was it Thursday? And I'm like and I'm like, What? And uh and he's like, Yeah, you know, and Trevor had been off at his girlfriend at the time, and, you know, anyway, he got COVID. And uh, so uh, I'm going, oh, my God. And so I walk into the offensive staff room to tell the coaches at 11 o'clock on Thursday that Trevor's out. And then I said, well, let me call DJ. And uh, and uh, one of the GAs said, well, Coach, I just – well, he's, he's, he's in the quarterback room right now watching tape. True freshman, not a starter. You know, he's the backup, you know, true. And, I, and I, I'm and i like, really? So I, I walk and I, and I kind of peek in the quarterback room. And uh, actually, he was in the tight end room. He wasn't even in the quarterback room. He was sitting in the – because the quarterback room was a COVID room. Uh, that's where Stucky and JP had their, you know, little – everybody was, you know, spread out all over. Well, so, so he was actually in the tight end meeting room. But uh, 
And I look in there, and there he is. He's sitting there. He's got his headphone on. He's, he's, he's watching tape by himself. And I open the door, and he's like, hey, what's up, coach? And uh, I said, well, you ready? And, you know, he's like, what's going on? So that, that's who he is. He's been that way since the day he got here from January. That, that's one of the things that, I, that I've said all the way back, that, you know, he's different than Trevor and Deshaun, but what made Trevor and Deshaun and Cade, it's the same way. Their aptitude for the game, their ability to learn and process things and take it from the meeting room to the game day, you know, is not everybody can do that. You know, and they just, just can't. Uh, but but he's, he's been that way since he got here. Very smart, very conscientious. And, uh, you know, he, he's he, – the game has slowed down for him as far as just his – uh, where he is, you know, just mentally, and and, uh, and part of that's just what he went through last year. Uh, love his poise. Two games don't make a season, but he's he's making he's making some strides, and it's been encouraging to see where he is. So, great leadership, great understanding of what we're doing. Knows when he makes a mistake. Absolutely knows when he makes a mistake. And uh, you know, just I appreciate that about him. Um, and you know, just just uh, outstanding leader and uh, great understanding of what we're trying to do. So hopefully he'll continue to have, have the success that, that we need him to have and that, that he deserves. Based on what you just said moments ago about guys, we'll see if they were loafing on the film. Was Monday about as much of a day that you can remember in a while of having to point out some effort yeah. things? Yeah, Mondays are, you know, so we start off with, with a hit tape, you know. We, 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 you know, we, we want to be a, pride ourselves on effort and being physical. And then, uh, and then I put a, I go through loafs, you know, uh, and I'll go through the tape, and 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 it, sometimes the coach may not think it's a loaf, but if it, if it's if I think it's a loaf, it's a loaf. And so, you know, uh, we we don't we don't we ain't gonna win without relentless effort. That's well, good things happen. You want you wanna, and the reason we've won so many games is because of that. I think about Kayvon Wallace. Getting to the goal line and punching that ball out at Texas A&M, you know that's just effort. You know, effort don't ever go in a slump, right? You know, you, you gonna have some bad days. I mean, bad things can happen, but but if you're a if you're a relentless effort guy, that leads to confidence and it leads to consistency, and that is that is just the fact. Uh, you know, intensity leads to focus. You know, it, it leads to concentration. Uh, and aggressiveness leads to physicality, and all, but all those things go back to to your to your effort. And uh, so, just 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 that's the basics. So you know, I've done that for years, and it usually doesn't take much. You know, if you got the right guys, they they're not going because first of all, if they keep showing up, they're not going they're not going to get but so much opportunity to have a chance to, sh to show up. If I have to keep correcting the same guy, then he ain't gonna be out there because. Uh, he, he, he don't deserve it. You know, sometimes guys just need to get on the same page on what, what's a loaf and what's not a loaf. And once you kind of educate and you teach and you correct, uh, if you don't get the response, then they don't care. And if they don't care like you need them to care, you're not going to win at the level we're trying to win at. So uh, that's every Monday. And, and, you know, some, you know, Cleveland Furrow, I'll never forget. Uh, I mean, I got him one week. And I was so happy that I got him, I, I, you know, because he was a hard guy to get. And I'll never forget, he came to my office. He came to my office after the meeting, and he told me, he said, "You will never, ever have a chance to call me out like that again in front of the team." I said, "Well, I hope not, but I'm gonna be looking." And uh, and and I didn't. Just relentless, relentless effort. You know, he wasn't the fourth pick in the draft because he was the fourth best player. Probably he was the fourth pick in the draft because of who he was on tape. And how hard he played, how physical he played, how relentless he was. I mean, you know, to go along with how talented he was. So, uh, it all starts there, man. Like I said, good effort leads to to great things. And sometimes you just it's covering to the ball, playing to the whistle. Um, and and you know, Barrett Carter, perfect example. He got that interception because he was hustling his butt off to the ball. He didn't have to. Play was kind of over, right? It was kind of a mush right there. And, when some ball gets tipped, but because he was hustling, he's there to make that pick. And so, um, yeah, we 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 go through lows, and then and then and then we we go through extra efforts. 
we had a lot of those too, a lot of extra effort. So as I always say, you know, what, what is great effort? And, and you know it when you see it, you know it when you don't. What is the eye of the tiger and the heart of a champion? Well, you know it when you see it, you know it when you don't. And so here, here, here's what it's not, and here's what it is. And sometimes, you know, for all of us, right, a picture's worth a thousand words. So we point that out every week. And uh, we always finish on a real high note with, with extra efforts and what it looks like. And then we, we'll, we move on to the next opponent. But again, Monday was probably one of those where you pointed out more lows oh, than yeah. you had in recent yeah. years. Yeah. Yep. Coach Meany, back here. So uh, Coach Trader was talking yesterday about DJ a lot of times when he's walking the sidelines. He's pointing out his mistakes before even Coach Streeter has, has been able to get to him first. So to have a, a starting quarterback that's so willing to, hey, I, I, I made this mistake and I, I'm, I, I know about it, to have a starting quarterback that's so willing to have that conversation and honest, what does that mean? Uh, it's just great leadership. I mean, that's just who he is. I mean, he's, he literally understands the game like a coach. He knows the game. And, you know, he's uh, very self-aware. Uh, he's his biggest critic. So, you know, he's, he's, he's very locked in and um, just love where he is right now from a mental standpoint, a focus standpoint, um, and just ownership. I mean, the interception, that shouldn't happen. He, he, he did, he did, they did trigger and they brought the backside safety and he didn't have his eyes where he needed to be post-snap. But he, that ball should have gone outside. Easy play, easy throw, wide open, easy completion. Um, but Spectre also shouldn't have stopped running, you know, but, but DJ don't want to hear that. DJ put that on himself 100% and, and you know, but, but that's 100% on Spectre too, you know, because I don't, I don't care if he, if, he, if he shouldn't have thrown it. If he stays on the move, you, then, then it's just an incompletion. You know, it's just a blow up incompletion uh, and you go to the next play. But because he stopped, and no, no quarterback's thinking that every guy inside slant's ever going to stop. You know, you're always on the move. And because he stopped, and he threw the ball where he should have been, and we just get a hand, uh, 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 oh, maybe I want to catch that, uh, and the ball's tipped, and then you get a pick. But, you know, it's good leadership on DJ's part because, I mean, he, 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 don't, he took all the blame. Because, it, you know, it starters for him because he, he should not have thrown the ball there. But... It's it's also on spec there. He he can't he can't he can't do that to his quarterback. Sometimes the quarterback makes a mistake. Well, if he just keeps coming and 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 does what he needs to do, all right, it's a it's a blow up catch or it's an incomplete, you know. And you go to the next play, and and then the quarterback's going, dang it, I shouldn't have thrown that, and and you learn from it. But instead, we we get a, we get a turnover. Uh, but from him, he. He didn't even want to even talk about that, you know. He he knew right when he came off the field, uh, you know. He just he didn't see the backside safety coming over off the pressure. He thought he had a clean lane, and uh, you know. So he just gets it. I mean, he understands. He knows the game, and uh, but he's always known the game. But he's just in a different place right now from a confidence standpoint, and and we're better around him, you know, uh, for sure. We're not we're not. Um, we're not anywhere what we need to be, uh, but but we are better, and uh, you know, I'm encouraged. Any questions for Coach from Zoom? Anybody else in the room? All right, Steve, Coach, those joining us on Zoom will close this room and reopen downstairs with Bo Collins in there. Thank you.